Shalom and greetings from Jerusalem. My name is Joan Lippis or hashtag Joni in Jerusalem, welcoming you to Lunchtime Prayer for Israel. Don't forget to check out the website, novea.org. Novea Ministries is the parent company for Lunchtime Prayer for Israel. And on our website, you'll see all sorts of cool links, all of which you can find at the end of the video. Well, the title of today is The Assyrian. The Assyrian. Now, Daniel had many names for the one we call the Antichrist. In his 70-week prophecy, he was very cryptic, but some prophecy teachers suggest that Daniel was referring to the Assyrian who appears in other places, especially in Daniel. So we're going to read a couple of scriptures today, starting with Daniel chapter 9, verse 26b. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Now, the people who destroyed the city and the sanctuary in 70 AD were from the Roman Empire. We know that. But do you also know that the Roman Empire in those days included Greece and Spain, the North African coast, much of the Middle East, modern-day France, and even Britain. <laughs> so it would not, now listen to me, it would not be necessary for the ancient Roman Empire, it would not be necessary for the ancient Roman Empire to rejuvenate itself, as the lawless one could come from any one of those modern countries to that date back to the first century. They're modern countries today, but they go back to the first century. Now, God sent the Assyrian to dispense his judgment on Israel many times. But as so often happens, God's tool of judgment was under the influence of Satan and just went too far. So we're reading today from Isaiah chapter 10, verses 5 through 12. Woe to Assyria, the rod of my anger and the staff in whose hand is my indignation. I will send him against an ungodly nation and against the people of my wrath I will give him charge to seize the spoil, to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. So here we have God's judgment is going to be enacted through this one. Yes. Yet, he does not mean so, nor does his heart think so. But it is in his heart to destroy and cut off not a few nations. For he says, are not my princes together kings? Is not Kalno like Karshemish? Is not Hamath like Arpad? Is not Syria like Damascus? As my hand has found the kingdoms of the idols whose carved images excelled those of Jerusalem, Samaria, as I have done to Samaria and her idols, shall I not also do to Jerusalem? Therefore, it shall come to pass when the Lord has performed all his work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem that he will say, I will punish the fruit of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his haughty looks. It happens every time, every single time, because Satan hates the Jewish people so much and even when God uses one of the nations to bring his judgment, they go too far. They go too far. I guess Satan is saying, I got it. I got it now. This is exactly what I need. I'm going to get Israel. Well, then what happens? God turns against the very nation that he was 
using to bring his judgment on Israel. You cannot touch the apple of his eye. You just can't do it. Now the fate of the Assyrian is found in Micah chapter 5 verses 5 and 6. When the Assyrian comes into our land and when he treads on our palaces, then we will raise against him seven shepherds and eight princely men. They shall waste with the sword the land of Israel and the land of Nimrod at its entrances. Thus he shall deliver us from the Assyrian when he comes into our land and when he treads within our borders. Hey, did you hear that? The land of Nimrod. What happened in Nimrod? You know the story of Babel. And Babylon has become the symbol in Scripture of all false religions, everything wicked. So, this Assyrian very well could be the Antichrist, the, the man of perdition, the lawless one. We have all the different names. Beloved, please pray for the church, not just your church, but the church to teach eschatology. What's eschatology? It's what we're doing right now. It is the study of end times. Why? So that believers will begin discerning the signs of the times that are all around us. I know that we all have different understandings of what is going to happen when. I have some friends who say, oh, we've got plenty of time, oh, plenty, plenty, plenty of time. And there are others like me who say, no, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. But we need to start discerning the signs of the times. You say, but Joni, I don't know what the signs of the times are. But that's why we're doing this series. So go back to the beginning. You may be coming in today for the first time. Go to YouTube. Go to the playlists under Lunchtime Prayer for Israel on YouTube and go to the playlist called The Preface. These are short videos and just start going step by step by step by step by step. And share them. Share them with your friends. So with that, I say thank you for your prayers. Thank you for keeping in touch. Thank you for writing your comments underneath the videos. That really is encouraging to me to know that you're being blessed with them or challenged. And so with that, I do say, Shalom, Lehitra Ot from Jerusalem.